Hey guys and welcome to a new video here on Photoshop. My name is Joseph. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my Canon R6 photo shoot experience. I'm also going to be adding some behind the scenes footage so you guys can see uh, the entire shoot. We were on this rooftop location, really nice place. And I was just using it for natural light because I was just testing the camera, just playing around to see if I can adjust to it because I've been shooting with the 5D Mark IV for a while now. So I have this rig on there from Small Rig. I'm going to do a dedicated video on the rig. This rig is on there because I want to be doing video with this camera as well. That's another reason why I switched from the R to the R6 because the R didn't have IBIS, it couldn't do 422 10 bits internally, it could do 10 bits, but unless you have um, an Atomos attached to it, and the 4K was also cropped. This has a very tiny crop on 4K, but it can do 10 bits internal, it can also do 10 bits external, obviously. And I have the Atomos Ninja 5, which I'm going to be attaching to this camera. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to bypass the IPB compression and I can do ProRes LT. ProRes, HQ, I can even do DNX, I can do all those codecs which are a lot better than what is going to be uh, done internally because the files are also going to be really, really tasking or demanding on your computer if you have a slower system. And you know my iMac is from 2015 and I don't want to be stressing that computer so much until I get a new one. Unless you have like the M1 chip which is really, really fast. I'm seeing so many reviews on that. People are shooting in 8K from the R5 and playing it out on the M1 and it's such a breeze. I know I just did a test on it and I was really, really impressed with the M1. But for now, what I have is a 2015 iMac and I'm sticking to it for a while. Alright, so for the photo shoots, again, I mentioned the autofocus was really quick. Uh, the IBIS system in the camera was also helping out in photo mode because this Sigma 24-70R lens has image stabilization and when you turn it on, it kicks in in the camera and it's able to work uh, really well together. So far, I haven't had any issues where they are competing with each other, especially because the Sigma is a third party lens and it's been adapted onto the camera even though I'm using Canon's native adapter. Um, it's really working well, autofocus is really quick. Same experience with the EOS R, not too different. So moving on, another issue that I thought I was gonna face or find hard to adjust to is gonna be the top dial. You know the 5D Mark IV has a screen here where you can see your settings, the EOS R, I was so used to the screen on the top where I could see my settings, but honestly, I am hardly ever shooting this way. I'm always shooting this way. And so you have the same display right here. So you can see your camera settings, you can see all the information that you need actually, and even on the bigger screen compared to what is on the top here, even though is like really quick for you to see where you are. I'm not really lacking uh, by having a camera that doesn't have this top screen. Another thing also that was holding me back was according to the reviews, we're complaining about the LCD quality of the R6. And to be honest, I am not really seeing any difference between the 5D Mark IV or the EOS R. I've not had them side by side, but I also think if you don't have those two cameras to compare and you're just and you're just left with this screen, honestly, it's going to work very well. I also don't really trust any of my LCD screens when I'm shooting. I don't trust my uh, 5D Mark IV screen, neither did I trust the EOS R screen. I only trust my histogram. So when I'm exposing, I'm always um, letting my histogram show in the top corner of the screen and I'm using that to adjust. So when I'm shooting with flash or natural light, I'm using that to adjust my exposure. Um, the certain things I'll keep constant. For example, if I want my aperture to stay at 2.8, I'll keep it that way and then adjust my ISO and shutter speed. I have another video coming soon where I'm also using the R6 system for a beauty shoot, so stay tuned for that. I know there's not a lot of people using the R6 on YouTube, so if you're looking for a resource, this channel is going to be the best bet for you because I'm going to be using this constantly for a lot of shoots right now. So you guys will see the quality for yourselves. And speaking of seeing the quality yourself, I have a Patreon page where I am uploading raw files on there so you guys can practice your retouching on or pixel peep in this case, especially if you want to see how sharp the images are. Um, being a part of my Patreon is going to guarantee that you get raw files, that you can play with pixel peep, do anything you want with them just for $7 a month. So another thing that has been changed is going to be the joystick on the back of the camera. You can see they've added a joystick right here, which was not present in the EOS R. And to me, honestly, I really like the touchpad. I was using it to adjust my ISO, but now we have three different buttons where we can assign to shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. So I'm not really losing out so much, but I really wish the touchpad was there because it was one of my favorite things. And I know it's really weird to say, especially when everybody was bashing that touchpad, I really, really liked it. I was able to swipe through my ISOs easily and I never, 
accidentally touched it. So moving on, the R5 and the R6 came out at the same time and they were really going hard on R5. I mean, if I was a company, I would definitely go hard on marketing my flagship camera. But to be honest, it has very good autofocus. It has very good dynamic range. It has very good ISO performance. 20 megapixels is plenty enough for whatever you want to do. Unless you're like a landscape or astro photographer or maybe you shoot wildlife where you do a lot of heavy cropping, then 20 megapixels obviously is not going to be enough. You need even to go all the way to like medium format, but then again, you can get like decent quality with the 45 megapixels of the R5. 20 megapixels is really not so much, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of heavy cropping, but it can definitely take very, very amazing, amazing images. And so I would highly recommend it, the Canon EOS R6. If you want to get it, you can use the link down below to get it. But enjoy the rest of the behind the scenes. I think I've spoken too much about the camera. I'll leave you guys to enjoy it. And um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, don't ever give up. I want to frame her with the architecture right here. So she's in the center and the walls are just, you know, creating these nice shapes around here. So I'm still shooting with natural light um, and I just want to start a bit wide. I can see the sockets, but I can just get rid of that in post. Don't forget to still raise your chin up. Yeah, perfect. I love that. Love that, love that, love that. Okay, now I'm going to zoom in. Yes, this is stunning. What if you just stand there like that? Yeah. And then, you know? Okay. So you can see even the shadow is also creating another pattern on the wall, and that is really nice. Just get a little closer. Perfect. Go lower as well, and maybe go slightly wider. All right. Can you raise your chin some more? Yeah. Stunning. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Can you pull on the dress again? Just try. Or you can even just do this to your hand, but still grab some of the fabric up. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, one more. Let me shoot from here. So you can turn and face me now. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's go wide. Can you cross it again? Yeah. 